guys want a shot at winning a copy of Call of Duty World War II for the console of your choice for absolutely free, a couple of my friends and I are doing a little giveaway. Link is down there in the description below. Go check it out if you're interested. Two years ago, Call of Duty was a lot different. It was something that we were still in our first year of the thruster movement, the EXO movement with Advanced Warfare, and Black Ops 3 was right on the horizon. And actually, two years ago to this point, we already had our first look in and first hands-on experience with Black Ops 3. So today, this is not gonna be anything too insane, but I wanna take a look back at some of what we knew of back then, how we viewed Black Ops 3 in the Call of Duty world, and basically just do a little showcase of a throwback to two years ago. Did we know that Black Ops 3 was going to be as active still to this day back then? Absolutely not. I don't think that it would have been at all possible to imagine that, but the game changed a lot since then, and so I want to take a look at showcasing some gameplay for you guys from back then and also just get a casual little discussion going on the topic. So, that said, Here's Black Ops 3 two years ago. So that said, at this point in time, the beta has come and gone two years back, but it was something that we had a lot of hands-on experience, two weekends time for this, and of course, something that was a lot of fun. Players on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC all got their hands-on experience and had an ability to test drive the game to see if they wanted to continue to purchase it later on down the line in November, or if they just wanted to play it and drop it if it wasn't their cup of tea. So obviously, as we know, Black Ops 3 has been very very successful in the past few years, so it seems like it was more so a good thing. As for what we knew back then, well, we knew about the specialist system, we knew about a lot of the weapons just based off the beta, we knew about some stuff that we really weren't supposed to, that being via data mining, such as the 9th specialist being Firebreak, we saw some weapons of the M27, the MP7, the Powerbolt Sniper, which later became the SVG, though the MP7 and the M27 were base models for weapons such as the ICR and the Pharaoh, we didn't ever actually see those in game, though a lot of people at the time thought that we would, and a lot of stuff from zombies was a little bit known based off of some things that we saw at Comic-Con, we knew Shadows of Evil was a thing, but all in all, it was a much more bare experience. And I guess that is something to be expected with a beta, because you're only showing off a portion of the game, you're not showing off the whole thing, otherwise it'd get super stale super fast, and that's something that's a year later, Infinite Warfare was kind of guilty of, because we saw a lot of what we saw in the full game at COD XP, and so therefore that early preview in September really was only missing some classic weapons and a few other things I think at that. But when it came to the beta, it was already past that point of gold status in which it could be pressed to discs. So nothing from say late September, early October to about January or February was brand new in the game. So that said, Black Ops 3 at least took advantage of that where it confined the gameplay to a smaller experience and allowed players to experience more at the full launch. And that was something that was absolutely beautiful. But as for how the game played, that itself was pretty different as well too. We had a various different modes, but a lot of the weaponry and the meta that we have in today's Black Ops 3 was a lot more different. Obviously take out the DLC weapons and all that kind of stuff, but things like the Shiva, the Razor, are back, weapons like that were absolute monsters. The Shiva was a one-shot headshot with high caliber at any range and at any distance. The Razorback was that of the super overpowered gun because it was high power up close and still the damage drop-off wasn't all that much at range and the ability to control the recoil with a grip really helped control that at range whereas it rivaled assault rifles and maybe even snipers in some points. And I cannot forget about the Man of War as well too, that being one of the weapons that was unlocked way earlier in the beta as compared to the full game and Back then, once again, with high caliber on that thing, it was a monster. But of course, even back then, we had some different variations of what we knew of in the aesthetics. Some things such being as the loading screens. Even the specialists back then were completely different, a much more bare version and something that did not have as much detail. At some points, it almost looked like they were incomplete poly models of the characters themselves, whereas compared to what we have now, there's a lot more detail, some intricacies with the character designs and everything like that that we've come to know and love for so long. Other things including just some things that may have even been cut, like that of how you called in aerial streaks, like a hellstorm or something like that, where you would bring up a hologram from your wrists, playing into that DNI augmentation that the campaign so heavily relied on in the full game. 
So it was something very cool where we got to see a lot of things that we still don't see today, but also some things that we never really got to see past that point. So it was interesting to see how it played out. And of course, Black Ops 3, two years later, is a much different game, especially with the DLC weapons, the amount of stuff in the black market, different DLC maps in terms of zombies, multiplayer maps, all kinds of stuff like that. The way the meta has changed with different patches and everything like that, it is a completely different game, but I think it's awesome to take a look at now what is two years ago, still a massively popular game in the community and something that a lot of people still love and maybe even play as their primary title. But nonetheless, I think it's absolutely awesome now to see where we are as a community, as a player base that still once again loves the game. I think it's interesting to think about back then we didn't realize what sort of game we were getting into, how big and grand of a scale this would take with the full gameplay experience. We thought, well, cool, it's a beta, we get to play out the game early, but we didn't really expect to be jumping into what may very well be one of the games that lives for a long time within the Call of Duty franchise. I think it's really cool to think about it in that aspect, but that said, that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Just once again, I wanted to give you guys a little showcase of where we came from in the past two years, what the game was like two years ago, for those of you guys that either were not a part of it or may not have remembered or just could use a little bit of a flashback to when it all began. So that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay updated with everything we have here regarding Black Ops 3 and Call of Duty World War 2 with everything coming out here in the next couple of weeks to months. We're going to be killing it. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a beat. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, out of the way, hope you guys had a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Later, take care and peace.